you ask the question, can machines think? You see, to even ask such a question during that time was revolutionary and provocative in the extreme. Nevertheless, in the 1960s, philosophical discussions as to how close to the human brain a computer took be, could be took place. Nonetheless, this was a time of limited thinking regarding the potential, regarding the potentials of AI, um, without truly considering the extents and possibilities of the different types of AI. The 1970s, known as the dark ages of AI research, is when most of the funding for AI disappeared. You see, this was mainly due to limitations in computer powers. Nonetheless, in the 1980s and the 1990s, is when the AI renaissance took place. Here, AI was no longer restricted to copying human intelligence. This AI had the potential to be bigger, faster, and even way better. Nowadays, AI has real life applications, particularly in the manufacturing and military sectors. This dramatic increase in computing power is both followed and predicted by what has now become known as more on walk down history. So in relation to my topic, AI and the growing cybersecurity threat. Alright, so um, let me just take you on a walk down history just like really quickly. Uh, UAV innovations, uh, unmanned aerial vehicles uh, started in the early 1900s where they were strictly considered as military technology. Over the years, the drone industry has become central to national security strategies of global powers such as the United States, China, and even Russia. Whatever the size, shape, or sophistication of these drones, they all perform the same functions, whether it's counterinsurgency, counterterrorism, intelligence, and even surveillance. This dependency, nonetheless, did not rise overnight, as there were a series of historical events and conditions that gave rise to such an enhanced and advanced technology. In World War I, Aerial surveillance was used extensively when the American military began developing self-flying aerial torpedoes. Not only that, but through the efforts of uh, Walter White and Charles F. Kennedy, the United States entered World War I with the first self-flying aerial torpedo. Where technology is an integral part of industrial and consumer goods, and the opportunities for cyber criminals to exploit such goods grows, grows to Trade as magic security issues just as well as they can be portrayed as malicious cyber actors themselves. Although its entire industry was later with the extreme, but it's continuously growing, and there is a need for a shift in its organizational security. Hence, as the number of drones increases, the number of cyber attacks against drones also increases. In relation to cyber attacks conducted against such drones, a recent study reflected that the American, or let's just say that the military application of drones currently dominates the drone market, and that the expected number of military, civilian, commercial drones is to be around uh, 18 million by the year 2023. In addition, the drone market is to be expected to accumulate more of, let's say, about $91 million over the next decade. The aforementioned numbers, the quantity of drones sold, and the industrial market of drones has been attributed to the increased and dominated military spending in the industry, and it will continue to ramp, seeing as the military, or let's just say as individuals, have been adopting such technologies since the early 1970s. Nonetheless, such widespread does not necessarily equate to being safe from attacks, as vulnerabilities do exist in drones such as non secure networks. So, my research initially portrays different components of drones in order to analyze and identify vulnerabilities in different forms of cyber attacks against drones, whether they're, let's just say, hardware attacks, spoofing attacks, or even wireless attacks. I guess I don't have much time to go deeper into different types of attacks, but I'll open the questions later on. So the general view is that the drones have a reliance on sensory inputs and communication links. The drones, or drones in general, are always going to be vulnerable to attacks particularly due to the heavy reliance on the global positioning system. I further seek to shift your focus to, let's say, a decade ahead. 
the merger with artificial intelligence. Although the drone industry actually transformed a lot of other industries, they are still limited by the human controllers. Yet, we can be certain that the next generation of drones will be completely powered by AI. Through the application of AI, drones will be capable of making decisions and operating on behalf of their human controllers. Nonetheless, this raises the main question that honestly might be so racist, which is, with enhanced adversarial cyber attacks, how could the combination of drones and AI create some sort of vulnerability in drones themselves? So, in addition to posing recommendations related to risk assessments and mechanisms of detecting cyber intrusions, I am to examine certain case studies, hence policies, let's just say in the EU, the US, and the OECD, that address the technical robustness and safety of AI systems in order to ensure effective cybersecurity. Throughout my research, I stress that AI is becoming a critical component in advanced technologies, and that advances in machine learning and cybersecurity are essential. I ultimately seek to communicate the idea of a regulatory environment encompassing both AI and cybersecurity. So, to my favorite, to my first point, the, the manipulation of artificial intelligence systems, or artificial intelligent robots, aka drones in the near future. So, the main question to be posed here is, with enhanced adversarial cyber capabilities, how can the combination of drones and AI create some sort of vulnerability in drones? So, let me just give you uh, a quick introduction. AI is the theory and development of computer systems able to perform tasks that would normally require human intelligence. There's a subdiscipline of AI called machine learning, and a subdiscipline of machine learning we call deep learning. Yet, such learning algorithms are not without blind spots as they can be subjected to uh, attacks. Machine learning generally allows computers to learn without being explicitly programmed. You can feed those systems that are large data sets they will learn and improve their performance over time and as new data flows in. Deep learning, the pinnacle of what we have achieved in this field, is a subdiscipline of machine learning that uses additional hierarchical layers of processing. It may be described as a framework to help machines learn that's loosely based on the human brain. Each node of the system is like a new model reacting to and processing inputs from other nodes to work towards an ultimate answer. Hence, deep learning extracts patterns from complex data. Drones are cyber physical systems, and when malicious parties gain access to such systems, they will be incapable of altering both the offensive and defensive capabilities. In his paper, AI Policy, Premier and Roadmap, Cable expressed that AI, or Ryan Cable, uh, expressed that AI itself creates this new, this new attack service in the sense that machine learning and other techniques can be used to purposefully trick the system. Hence, this is in the realm of adversarial machine learning. So, adversarial machine learning is a technique employed in the field of machine learning that attempts to fool models through malicious input. Hence, those adversarial inputs seek to cause malfunctions in standard machine learning, and thus compromise the security of the target. From a general standpoint, when building the machine learning algorithm, the information fed is being used to generalize about all of the surroundings in order to reach a perfect model. Nonetheless, we're always going to have some sort of vulnerability available as it cannot always reach a perfect model. So, this is when adversaries come into play, as they're going to be able to feed the model, or let's just say the algorithm, with inputs that are meant to cause the object to misbehave. So, generally, there are two primary types of adversarial cyber attacks, which are poisoning attacks and invasion attacks. Poisoning attacks are those attacks against online models uh, that learn as new data flows. And here, the attacker seeks to, let's just say, shift the chip boundary in his or her own favor. The other method, which is evasion attacks. So, evasion attacks are attacks 
in which the attacker or the adversary seeks to avoid detection by confusing the model, causing it to misclassify a sample. This may be a spam or a malware. For instance, the spam may be embedded in the image to avoid the textual analysis performed by the anti spam fluctuation systems. So, although adversarial um, examples have been dominant in recent years, cyber attackers are going to be able to apply simpler principles to network and malware attacks. So, is there a systematic approach in evaluating the potential risks of such attacks? As discussed, drones have become the first tool of choice in military and insurgency operations. Yet, despite their widespread use, they still have a lot of vulnerabilities, such as the lack of adequate cybersecurity measures. Cyber attackers are constantly looking for vulnerabilities in drones in order to interfere with that system's function. So, in order for a system to remain secure, risk assessments and technical improvements need to be continuously adopted and improved in order to identify potential hackers that have the capability of penetrating such systems. So, in relation to the onboard sensors of drones, it is vital to take into consideration each sensor input individually, the mechanisms and defenses to detect spoofed or false sensor data values, and the fact that such sensors pose a risk to the integrity of the drone system. Seeing, let's just say that they're always going to be vulnerable to the sensors, right? The aforementioned, hence, of our sensors can be a link to predictive analytics. So, common particular defined predictive analytics is using machine learning and other cognitive approaches to understand how learning patterns can help predict future outcomes or help humans make decisions about future outcomes based on insights learned from interactions, behavior, and other data. Therefore, by giving such machines all kinds of previous attacks, they will be able or capable of identifying intrusions. Because let's face it, machine learning and artificial intelligence is way better at identifying things than humans. The tracking devices uh, can also be considered as a solution to the risk posed by uh, drones falling in the wrong hands. Let's just say, for instance, drones manufactured by certain corporations can be designed to include chips or other electronics that would help the drone, I don't know, be easier for them being found generally. Uh, you also got encryption. The use of encryption mechanisms may preserve the confidentiality of the data stored and transmitted by the drone, um, as well as installing forgery detection mechanisms that would preserve the drone's data from being overwritten. Finally, in relation to defense mechanisms against adversarial cyber attacks, um, OpenAI, which is uh, a non-profit AI research organization, provided that only two methods until now have provided legitimate defense mechanisms against adversarial cyber attacks. So what are they? Adversarial training and defensive installation. Let me just go through them quickly. So adversarial training is simply generating a big set of adversarial examples and train the model to not be fooled by each and every single one of them. Nevertheless, from a personal standpoint, I don't believe that this is an effective method because no matter the number of examples that you feed that model, there are always going to be other vulnerabilities which should not be found yet. The other method, which I can personally consider more effective, is defensive distillation. So defensive distillation is when you've got two models and you train one model to achieve soft accuracy, which is around 95%, and another model has a filtration system in order to reach full accuracy. So, you see from a general standpoint, defensive distillation is more effective. So why is that? This is because it's less susceptible to exploitation due to the flexibility in the algorithm's classification process. And to be honest with you, defensive distillation requires way less, probably not non-human intervention. So let's move to the regulatory scene um, because I think it's vital uh, to actually consider both sides of the argument, the regulations and the technology itself, because it's just an entire process and it kind of completes each other. So, so there are three main case studies that I'm going to present. 
the US case study, the, the UK study, and the OECD recommendations. So, in combating cyber attacks against drones or let's just say military facilities, I'm focusing, by the way, like on military and the military facility a lot, because like all the cases about drones getting hacked that kind of go past me are kind of just related to the military. And I think it's more relevant and it's all over the news. Uh, or a lot of case studies about that. So, while drafting cyber regulations are all for, you see, it was not overlooked that drones have vulnerabilities of multiple kinds that they can increasingly be cyber attacked. Hence, AI software can be hacked, and the data that it collects or relies on can be manipulated. In recent years, the White House has made American leadership in the field of AI a priority. As this has been reflected by the recently announced executive order in February 2019 on maintaining the relevant leadership in the field of AI. You see, this initiative, by the way, has successfully addressed the underlying problem, which is the necessity of policymakers to collaborate with designers to investigate and prevent them, let's just say, the potential malicious uses of AI. But the relevant section under this sort of executive order to my kind of focus of research is section 2, which is objectives that provides that implementing agencies such as the National Institute of Science and Technology, the National Science and Technology Council Select Committee on Artificial Intelligence shall ensure that technical standards minimize vulnerabilities to attacks from malicious actors in systems that use AI. This has been supported by the fact that systems that use AI and machine learning have been described by the current U.S. administration as one of the primary areas where modernization of key capabilities is desired. The second one, the EU uh, ethics guidelines for trustworthy AI. On April 8th, 2000, or no, well, it's either April 8th or either way, April 2019, the European Commission has actually taken the step of releasing a set of ethical guidelines for the trustworthy development of AI. The High Level Expert Group, established by the Commission in June 2018, released the document titled EU Ethics Guidelines for Trustworthy AI. Unlike other national strategies and guidelines adopted, the EU Commission hopes to address legal and ethical questions surrounding the adoption of AI. The document is, um, let's just say, a key requirement put forth by the document is the robustness and security of the AI system. It's a voluntary framework to achieve ethical, robust, and lawful AI, in which AI applies or is compatible with applicable laws and regulations and is robust from a technical perspective. In relation to the technical robustness and safety of AI systems, the document provided that such systems would be, should be secure and resilient to manipulation and attacks. It explicitly provided that such systems be safe, secure, and robust in order to prevent any unintended adverse impacts. Nevertheless, unlike the extensive deliberation provided by the government on the ethical and development of AI, it failed to address the regulatory scheme and the technical scene in a manner sufficient to provide guidance for the development of artificial intelligent systems. Nevertheless, this may be justified by the fact that laws and regulations cannot keep up with the rapid development in um, advanced technologies, therefore ethics may fill in the gaps where regulations fall short. The final one, which is the OECD Council recommendation, um, just recently in May 2019, um, 36 members of your council actually um, approved the council recommendations on AI by adopting the principles on AI. Not only that, but six other members that are not even OCD members joined as well, which were Argentina, Brazil, Costa Rica, Colombia, Romania, and even Peru. In relation to technical robustness and safety, the document explicitly provided that such systems should be safe, secure, and robust throughout their entire life cycle so that in conditions of normal use or any other unintended adverse impacts, they will function appropriately and will not pose any unreasonable risks. Nonetheless, just like the executive order and the code of ethics, those recommendations are not legally binding, therefore there are no punishments for violating them. 
Nevertheless, they could be considered important as they represent the political will of the OC and parents. So, uh, kind of, they can be considered as a base for what international standards can be formulated. So, just to wrap up, um, okay, so are all of those stuff that I just mentioned sufficient in addressing AI robustness and safety? Focusing a lot of them kind of isn't, but at the end of the day, uh, I guess they could actually slow down a route that we can follow towards adopting such principles. And as I mentioned, there are punishments for violating them, and it's mainly the responsibility of um, regulators and to enforce those principles, whereas it is the responsibility of engineers to implement certain technologies in accordance with ethical um, standards. So, this is kind of a uh, proposal to formulate a proper regulatory framework. I had a lot of discussion about this, but I guess I'm kind of running out of time. So, I'd be happy to respond to anything after this. So, uh, I don't know, proposing government regulation as it's necessary to prevent the harms of and misuse of potential AI systems. Nonetheless, I personally believe that regulators should consider the application of AI in multiple industries separately, such as UAV's loan, autonomous vehicles loans, and healthcare loan, as regulating AI in a general fashion would be misguided due to each industry having its own set of regulations and risks. Updating certain regulations could also be considered as a solution in those certain areas, as well as, let's just say, coordinating with certain stakeholders, particularly in the technical community. And um, finally, regulations to stress on the matter of designating accountability and liability, and as humans are responsible for the development of such systems, humans, or let's just say corporations in specific, ought to reflect the thoroughness in their development of AI systems. So, in conclusion, um, this whole technological security discussion needs another 10 minutes, but that's just for another time. So, so um, as no country has a strategic approach towards the governance of artificial intelligence systems or technical artificial intelligence systems, at least yet, we need to stress on the matter of, of, of having a proper regulatory framework. It's without it, we will be lost. A regulatory framework would set the compass for the responsible and secure development of artificial intelligence systems. And to be honest with you, engineers and computer scientists should not be given the opportunities to decide which factors should be embedded in the technologies that would shape our near future. Ladies and gentlemen, AI and cybersecurity are to become a partnership that nations, militaries, Operations and individuals in specific will work their faith into. Thank you very much for your time, and I'm looking for questions later on.